But at creation, what God did is he took that one humanity and he divided it into male and female and nothing else. Now, now, this is not just some religious idea, right? This is actually a, a provable, verifiable, scientific reality. If we look at genetics, we, we understand that genetics allows us to sort all of humanity into two categories, right? We have these chromosomes, and our chromosomes identify which category we get sorted into, either male or female. Biology allows us to do the same thing because all of us have biological organs by which we can identify whether we're male or female. We have external and internal organs. So, so my wife has body parts that I don't have, and I have body parts that she doesn't have. And if we didn't know otherwise, that's how we would be able to identify which one of us is the male and which one of us is the female. Right? This is just basic level biology, that, that we have body parts that identify whether we're male or female. But, but there's one other piece of, of this passage that is provable, verifiable, scientific evidence. All right, here, here it is. After God creates, it says, and God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Right? Now, you don't have to be a Christian to understand the truth of this. You can be an atheist, and, and this still makes sense to you. If the species is to continue on, we must be fruitful and multiply. Because all of us are going to die, we need to make more humans. And the only way we can do that is through the male-female partnership. Right? Again, this, this is not just a religious idea. This is standard biology 101. Male and female together is the only way that we can reproduce. It's the only way we can be fruitful and multiply. And you may say, David, you know, this is an odd place to start. You're, you're saying stuff that everybody knows. And, and you know what? 10 to 15 years ago, that was true. This, this, <laughs> I don't mean that to be funny, but, but I mean, 10 to 15 years ago, this was common sense, and I probably wouldn't have even need to say any of that. But I think we all understand that something's changed, right? We all understand that, that some of the stuff that I just said, while it may seem obvious to you, doesn't seem obvious to everyone. And in fact, some of the things I just said will sound hateful to some people. How did we get here from where we were? I want to I suggest you there's three ideas Three ideas that have infiltrated humanity and in some ways infected humanity that got us from there to here. Here's the first one. The first idea is that we know better than God. Now, this one starts all the way back in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis 1 and 2, you have this perfect ideal creation. Everything works the way it's supposed to work. Adam and Eve, they're together. They're happy. The two have become one. Everything is great. Genesis 3, Satan shows up, says to Eve, don't you know that you can be like God? Just eat this fruit. Eve says, I think I know better than God. So she and Adam together eat the fruit and evil enters the world. So because Adam and Eve believed they knew better than God, evil came into the world. And as a result of evil entering the world, the ideal creation of Genesis 1 and 2 was completely lost. And creation is no longer perfect and it's no longer ideal. Now we're at odds with each other. Adam and Eve were at odds with each other. Adam and Eve were at odds with God. Adam and Eve were at odds with nature. And if you really want to understand how quickly everything got broken, you only need to go to Genesis 4, where they have two babies that are born and one of them kills the other one. Because immediately humanity was broken. And because we live in a Genesis 3 world and not a Genesis 1 and 2 world, that means that a lot of times we deal with confusion about things that didn't used to be confusing. And we deal with a lack of certainty about things that used to be certain. And in fact, this is true about us genetically. I just said, you know, genetically we can sort male and female because we have these chromosomes that help us do that. But the reality is that in a Genesis 3 world, it doesn't always work that way. In a Genesis 3 world, there are some people who are born whose chromosomes don't naturally align with everybody else's. There, there are these, these things called Kleinfelter syndrome or Turner syndrome, where a male or a female has an extra or is missing a chromosome. And, and so there's all of a sudden this little bit of a gray area as to where do we sort this person? 
And, and biologically, sometimes there's a lack of clarity. You, you know, most of the time when a baby's born, the doctor goes, boy or girl, right? They, they know right away. But there are times, there are times when the, the body parts, the biological organs that we use to sort aren't as clear. There's a little bit of ambiguity. And, and, and we're not quite sure, do we sort this male or do we sort this person female? And that brings us to the second idea that has really infiltrated humanity. The first idea is that we know better than God. As a result of that idea, everything got broken and nothing is as how it's supposed to be. The second idea is a lack of certainty equals a lack of truth. So there's this idea that because we can't be certain about everything, therefore we can't be certain about anything. Now this idea plays itself in a lot of other areas. Religion is one of them. There are a lot of people out there who who look at the Bible, they look at God, and they say, I can't be certain about everything about Christianity. I have questions, and so I'm just going to leave the faith. If I can't be certain about everything, that must mean I can't be certain about anything. Now, Now, we don't really actually live our lives this way. Today, after church is over, I'm going to drive home. I don't know on my drive home if the other people who are driving are good drivers or bad drivers. Now, I'm in Ohio, so that tells me something. All right? But I don't, I don't know if they've got driver's licenses. I don't know if they've been to driving school. I don't know if they're inebriated. I don't know any of those things. There is a certain lack of certainty that I have about driving home. But you know what I'm still going to do? I'm, I'm going to drive home. Because even though I don't know everything, I still know enough that the statistics tell me, the rules of the road tell me I'm probably going to be safe driving home. Lack of certainty in a little area doesn't mean I have lack of certainty everywhere. But what's happened in, in, in our world in recent times is that we said, well, there's, there is this lack of certainty about gender and about sexuality. Like there, there is this this group of people who, they are the exceptions to the rule. They are the variants. And because we can't be certain about that, that probably means we can't be certain about anything. And so all of a sudden, instead of us saying, well, we, we generally know scientifically, genetically, biologically, we know that we are sorted male and female. That's, that seems to be the standard knowledge. It's verifiable. It's provable. But the second idea that's infiltrated and affected humanity is if you don't have certainty everywhere, you can't have certainty anywhere. And that leads us into the third idea, which is probably the most harmful idea, is that we reject truth for our feelings and our self-knowledge. Well, what happens is in a world where I say, well, I can't be certain of everything, therefore I'm not certain of anything, now the only way I can know something is true is if I feel it or if I know it for myself. And so all of a sudden we've taken truth, truth that's verifiable and provable, and we've diminished it so that we can elevate our own feelings and emotions and our own knowledge that we think we have as the source of truth. And this is dangerous. In fact, the Bible actually warns us about this. Jeremiah 17 says that the heart is what? Deceptively wicked. Our heart, our our emotions, our feelings, they will deceive us. Have you ever been deceived by your feelings? Proverbs 3, Solomon's writing to his sons, and he says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. He's saying to his sons, don't trust your own thinking. Don't trust your own mind. Your mind is not always trustworthy. There are times when you think something is true and you discover later that it is not true, right? There are times when you may look around and say, well, that person doesn't like me. I know that person doesn't like me. I know I can't accomplish that. I know that's not going to happen. I know I'm not going to finish that. And you are absolutely convinced in your own mind that you know this only to discover later, I was wrong. That wasn't true. This is actually the plot line of every Hallmark movie ever made, right? So like city girl or city guy has to go into some rural small town 
and they feel awful about it. They feel angry. They feel nervous. They don't want to go there. And they are 100% certain. They know they aren't going to like anybody. They aren't going to like the way of life. They're going to have a miserable time. They feel bad and they know it's going to be terrible. And then they meet that special person. Everything changes and they realize that their feelings had led them astray and what they thought they knew wasn't true at all. You see, here's the reality. What I feel about myself is less than what I know about myself, right? There are times I feel things about myself and then later I'm like, oh, I was wrong about that. So what I feel about myself is less than what I know about myself and what I know about myself is less than what is true about myself. And I have to be careful that I don't fall into this trap of being led by my feelings, by my emotions, by the things I think I know to be true and build my life on something that's false. But when we talk about this, this question of, of gender, we live in a world today that has swallowed those three ideas whole. Idea number one, I know better than God. Idea number two, if I can't be certain about everything, I can't be certain about anything. And idea number three, my feelings and what I know about myself is more important than what is verifiably true about me. If you do a, a quick Google search and just ask Google a question, like, what is gender identity? Right? Go, go to chat GPT to really get the absolute rock hard truth, right? Maybe not. But if you, if you just ask Google a question like that, you're going to come back with a lot of answers. You can go to a lot of different sources. So this week I did that. I looked at chat GPT because that gives us an idea of what most people are thinking, right? I, I looked at the Ontario Human Rights Commission. I looked at NPR, all right? And then, then I looked at Portland.gov because we, we have a massive following in Portland. I don't know if you knew that. Our church does. It's my kids. <laughs> Hi, guys. But as I, I went to these different sources, of what is gender identity? Here's, here's what gender identity is. It's a person's internal understanding and perception of their own gender. It's each person's internal and individual experience. It's one's own internal sense. It's one's innermost... Are you seeing the pattern here? Everything is rooted on what's inside of me. Everything is rooted on how I feel, what I feel, what I think about myself. None of it is based on anything that is verifiable or provable. Not genetically, not biologically, not scientifically. It's all internal. What do I feel? What do I do? So, so here's the problem then. Now we have people who look in the mirror and what they see in the mirror is very different than what they feel inside. And they don't know what to do about that. And so what the world says to them is, if your mind is at war with your body, then change your body and your mind will come into alignment. Now, now, now think through what's beneath this philosophy, what's beneath this ideology. What, what they're being told is, you can trust your mind, you can trust your feelings, but you can't trust what you see. You, you can trust your emotions, but you can't trust what is verifiable or, or what is provable. And, and so they elevate feelings and emotions over what is verifiable and provable. But here's the problem. We don't do this anywhere else. Right? If someone goes to the doctor and the doctor determines that they have cancer, they say, Mr. Smith, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, you have cancer. And if Mr. Smith says, well, doctor, that's strange because I feel fine. The doctor does not say, oh, you do? Okay, then. We won't worry about it. If you feel fine, you must be fine. Let's trust your feelings over what we can see. If, if a young girl goes to the doctor for for bulimia or anorexia and says, doctor, I feel so overweight. I feel like I'm just huge. I, I, I feel like I'm morbidly obese. The doctor does not say, oh, if that's how you feel, here's some diet pills, right? Or if that's how you feel, let's, let's do some, let's do a gastric bypass. Let's, let's get this fixed. 
No, actually, I, I did do some real research this week, and I went and looked at some medical journals trying to discover what is the treatment that, that most doctors use for eating disorders. And listen, listen to what some of the treatments are. Psychotherapy, counseling, medication for mental health, interventions, therapy. Do, do you see this? They're treating the mind. They're saying, you know what? We can see the truth in your body that you are not morbidly obese, that you are not overweight, that you actually need to eat a sandwich. And so we're not going to change your body. We are going to change your mind. Now, now listen, I, 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 want, I want to be very careful here because I don't want us to miss the fact that this is a very real struggle for many people, okay? This, this is not something that is easy. There, there is no one who chooses to, to live their life with their mind being at war with their body. And, and there are some people who, for the entirety of their life, they have struggled with looking in the mirror and feeling like what they see is very different than what they feel. But the solution cannot be based on what can't be trusted. We cannot tell people to build their lives on their emotions or their feelings or what they think about themselves because if you build your life on that, it's like building on the sand. When the storms of life comes, it collapses. There has to be a better answer. And there is. It's the answer that God gives us. Because God's answer, what he says to this problem, is change your mind and your body will come into alignment. 